Hello, and welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today, we're going to be looking at how to set up an Nginx web server using Docker in a manner that's considered to be Docker best practices. We're going to remove the root user from the actual Docker file in the Docker build process. Now, I spent a good amount of time researching and developing this, pro this process for myself on one of my personal projects over the last couple of days. And I wanna show you how it's done as a lot of the online tutorials I found a little bit confusing and I was running into error messages when I was trying to run the containers. So I found out that Nginx's Docker Hub container actually has a user already built into it. And we're able to use that user to remove the root user permissions from the Docker container with only minor configuration. We're going to start out here by actually creating the website using a Proxmox container that's been pre-installed with Docker and we've loaded the files and we're going to do this with the process that will normally use root. So the pretty standard process. Then we'll look at how to modify the container so that it doesn't use the root user. So with this let's start by moving over to Adam and looking at some of the files that I've already created and loaded onto our Proxmox web container that we're going to use. And so the first file I want to look at is the index.html file. And this is a pretty simple website here. As you can see, I've basically put three lines of text in here in a very basic boilerplate so we know something's up and running and we have some files to work with. The next file I'd like to look at is the nginx config file. And again, this is the simplest nginx config file that you can have, but it's all that we need to get a website up and running. And the last is going to be the Docker file. And again, you can see we're pulling the Nginx latest version from Docker Hub. We're setting our working directory. We're pulling in that configuration file and we're copying in some files for the website. All right, so let's move over to the container and you can see that I have a container set up and I've gone ahead and loaded the files in here and you can see that I've set my directory up in such that I have, well, we'll back up here. So here at the Proxmox container, you can see that I've already done some work and uploaded our files and got things started so we don't have to spend the time in this video doing so. And I've created a folder in my user account called video. If we open that folder and we display that folder, you can notice that we have a few files in here. And I've placed my Docker file and and my nginx config file here along with another folder called site and the reason for that is if we go to copy all the files from site or from this video directory and we were to copy them into our docker container our docker file and our nginx config file would also copy in there it's not the biggest deal but from some of my reading it could cause some vulnerabilities later on some more complex websites and it's also just not best practices. So I contained my entire site in the site folder and left my configuration folders outside of that. We'll open up the site file or site folder rather, and we'll take a look and you can see that all I have in here for this particular site is the index.html file that we looked at before. I wanna show you one minor alteration though, and that's inside of the Docker file that we, from what we looked at just a moment ago. You can see that here in the copy command where we copy the HTML files or the site files into the web server themselves, I added a dot slash site instead of just a dot. So what that does is it moves us up one directory from the working directory where we're building the file from, which would be video on this server to site. And then we copy the entire contents of the site folder into the HTML folder on our Nginx server. So with that, let's just take a look and make sure nothing's running in Docker and nothing's running. So let's now build this website and display it for the first time. Now remember this process and these files that I've created to date are going to run Nginx as the root user. So to build this out, we're gonna use the command docker build and we're gonna do a dash T and we're gonna give it a the name we wanna call it and we'll call it V video. Now we wanna tell it to work from the video directory. So we're gonna put a space and a period and we build out our docker. So if we were to run docker images, we can see our docker image was created. So let's run, now use docker run dash d dash p to specify ports. 
and we'll run this as 8080 and we're going to call this the video the ve video file press run we get a readout and we should be able to now view our website on our web browser so back at our web browser, let's open a new tab and you can see our website's up and running. Okay, so now that we know we have a working website and a working configuration file, let's go back to our Docker container. I wanna run a Docker PS, which is gonna get me the name of the running Docker container. And then I'm just going to run a Docker stop and I'm gonna paste that name. That's gonna turn off the container. So rerunning Docker PS, you can see that there's nothing running now and hop back to our web browser you can see there's no longer a site there so now let's go into the docker file and make the necessary edits so this website will run without the root user i'm going to do that here on the server with a tool called nano and the first set of lines that i'm going to add here are some lines that are going to set permissions to the NGNX user and NGNX group for different configuration and logging files that NGNX is going to use in its setup process or startup process rather. And if we don't add these for any user, we're gonna get some errors. And we're gonna add them right here below where we set the working direction directory. Now the next set of commands we're going to add, we're going to add here to the bottom of the file. And what this command's going to do is it's going to run the ch own command to set the app directory to an owner of NGINX and an owner group of NGINX. So the user and the user's group are allowed to interact with this folder for permissions. And the last command we're going to enter is the command that actually changes the user from root over to the user NGNX so that this server's user will be NGNX. Now let's go ahead and save this file by hitting Control X, Y, and Enter, and try rebuilding this file. We shouldn't have any problems, but let's find out. So once again, we're gonna use the Docker build command, and we'll this time call it VE boot video. I'm gonna hit, again, put the period in, because we're building from this directory and we've built the file out. Now if we run Docker images, you can see that we have the two files that we made. So let's this time use Docker run. And again, the dash D, which makes it so it doesn't display the logging from the server and the dash P for the port. And we can go ahead and run this from 8080 and we'll run the VE root video this time. You can see it starts up. And if we run Docker PS, we can see that it's running. Refreshing our web browser, we see that our server comes up and we indeed now have a Docker web server running NJNX without a root user account. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it informational, and now can begin using your Docker containers without a root account, at least for NJNX. As always, have a good night. And if you found benefit from this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to help virtualize everything continue to grow.